Welcome back to Cryptolytics, giving you a fresh take on crypto analytics. And this is your crypto recap, where I cover some of the things going on in the crypto space. So let's jump in. Okay, so just going to cover the short term price action on Bitcoin today. Not really going to go over too much of this because I got a lot to cover with regards to the Solana ecosystem update. But we had some price run up into the announcement of the ETF in Hong Kong, the, the launch, which is today. And we had a bit of a sell the news event, right? <laughs> So there you go. There's a bearish engulfing candle there on the one hour. But um, but yeah, we had this out of 5% almost run up from the lows. I actually added to my long here because we're at the bottom of this range. And also because we got blue, which I have mentioned many times when I see blue on the stochastic heat map in a bull market, especially in a range like this. And I add to my long. There's definitely still risk to the downside though, admittedly, uh, as we stay sort of in these levels for an extended period of time. But for the most part, we're kind of just chopping sideways. So nothing too much to report there, at least for now. But uh, later in the week, we might get more decision with regards to where the market wants to move to next in the short term. But if you follow moon phases, then we've got a bull moon here. So maybe <laughs> maybe that's uh, something that'll push us up a little bit. But we've got the 21 smooth moving average to contend with, which is not perfect on the 12 hour, but it's definitely something you can see reactions off. But anyway, I think uh, for now, I've got sort of bearish trend on the CVI, bearish trend on the Ichimoku TK cross trend meter. So overall, I mean, I'm, I've got my long here, but I'm also slowly starting to build a short as well to hedge just in case, because I don't know which direction will go first, because as I said in the last video, kind of neutral at the moment. And uh, yeah, last night we had a picture perfect stop loss hunt. So we had this big pocket of liquidity here, basically came straight into it, which is where I put my buy limit order on drift, took it and then went straight away from it. I mean, that's just, as I said, picture perfect liquidation hunt right there. So yes, as I said, this Spock Bitcoin ETF is officially live for trading. I did try to find the chart and I couldn't find the chart for that. But what I did find is the chart for Becerra hash key stock price. Check this out. It surged 136% this morning. This thing is super liquid. Like if you look at it, not on the Heikonashi chart, it looks crazy. So I put it in Heikonashi so it'd be easier to see. But look at this 136% pump from the Bitcoin ETF announcement, which is crazy. This is on the weekly chart. So yeah. <laughs> How nuts is that? And I'll update more on that when we've got information on it. We should hopefully get more of that information sort of start to pop into coin glass. So we'll be able to keep track of it. But for now, we don't have anything there. Now, with regards to the Australia spot Bitcoin ETF. Now, people keep posting this, but Australia already has a spot Bitcoin ETF. So it's EBTC and it's been available since 2022 for trading. And that's the Global X ETFs one. But it's on the CBOE exchange, not ASX. So ASX is the biggest exchange in Australia. And at the moment, it is not on the ASX. Basically, the real news is that VanEck, BetaShares, Digital X have all filed for ETFs on the ASX and they'll hopefully start listing by late 2024. And the main target here is, and these could quite well invest in CBOE, so there's nothing stopping them from doing that. But the, I think the main target really for these ETFs, especially, you know, with Bayonet, for example, because they're really big and quite reputable, is I guess targeting Australia's superannuation. So we have superannuation, which basically 9% of your annual salary, or it's usually 9% is bolted on top of, of your annual salary goes into what's called superannuation, which is your retirement fund. Now the retirement funds in Australia are huge because everyone gets this. It's not like, you know, IRAs or anything like that where you've got to do it manually. This is literally something that every single citizen in Australia gets. So $3.7 trillion potentially exposure uh, because a lot of those super funds invest for you. They all, all invest for you essentially to get that compound interest over time. So that's a huge potential exposure there. But apart from that, I don't really see much more coming from this because Australia's market is quite small. But in terms of CBOE versus ASX, well, the CBOE is significantly smaller. So the ASX accounts for around 80 to 83% of the total daily dollar value traded in Australia with regards to trading. And so a lot more volume, that's for sure. And CBOE is about 17 to 20% roughly. And you know, you're looking at about hundreds of thousands roughly in trade volume versus well and truly into the millions. So that's the difference essentially. And that's the real news, not Australia's first spot Bitcoin ETF. No, it's not the first one, but it's better exposure to a bigger market. So April so far has not been the best month. One of the worst performers actually 
since 22, but 22 was the bear market, so there's no surprise there. What I'm impressed by is, look at February, 43% up. So this is the strongest February that we've had since 2013. That's pretty impressive. That's crazy February. That was a very impressive month for us this year. And then so far, we're not looking the best at the moment for, uh, for April. But April's usually a decent month. I mean, 2022 was a bear market. But in a bull market, in the last bull market was, if you count 2020, it's still kind of part of the bull market. That was 34%. So pretty surprising. And then here's our May actually, but May overall, the average is up usually. So I think it's a bit of a, it's a bit skewed here. Like it could be a mix of either. So anyway, the monthly returns, not looking the best at the moment. Now there's some news about Russia banning crypto. Uh, there's actually, that's a bit of a misreporting. So Russia's actually not banning crypto in September. The officials clarified they <laughs> need to emphasize the need for accurate reporting for the sensational headlines. Well, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> so crypto turnover will not be prohibited, but yeah, setting up crypto exchanges and OTC services outside of the zone of operation of the experimental legal regime. What the hell does that even mean? Come on. <laughs> um, will be under prohibition. So anyway, no no plans for a Russia total crypto ban. Just so you know, if you hear it, which it's being posted all over the place, but uh, they're basically banning the creation of domestic crypto exchanges and payment services. So in other words, you'll have to use ones that are hosted overseas, essentially. So there you go. I think that's, <laughs> that's the translation, right? I mean, most headlines are generally pretty bearish on Russia, to be honest, due to geopolitical events and you know, typical new McCarthyism. But anyway, whatever. Let's not uh, get into that. <laughs> so here we go. Meme coins. Meme coins are worthless, says Intelligent Vesta with a basket of coins listed below. Now, this was a massive shots fired. Uh, there's a lot of crypto communities that would have been pretty angered by this. You've got XRP Army and Cardano Army both getting thrown under the bus with this one. But you may have seen this circulating around. And this is basically a list compiled by Forbes. And uh, it was something about zombie blockchains, I think they said. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think this is necessarily accurate overall. I mean, Phantom's in this list. That's ludicrous. I, mean, I think that Phantom, I mean, if they're quiet now, they'll probably come back during the peak of the bull market. Are we? I mean, why are they throwing them under the bus? I think everything else, maybe you could, uh, you could say maybe. I don't know. Cardano, I've checked out their DeFi. It's nothing too special. XRP, well, what, what do you even have for this? It's definitely not going to be a major payments platform, that's for sure, because stable coins pretty much have taken over this and everything else, you know, you can have your own opinion on. I mean, I hold Cardano and XRP in my portfolio. Call me crazy, but it is what it is. But, uh, you know, <laughs> how you feel about this is up to you. But, you know, they just completely thrown many communities under the bus with this one. OK, so let's get into the Solana ecosystem update. And there's a lot to cover as is always the case with uh, with regards to Solana ecosystem stuff. Always new stuff coming out. So I saw this post. Bitcoin could drop to 55k and still be up 20% YTD. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Why bearish? And I, I said Sol could drop to 115 and still be up 400% year to day. Why bearish? I mean, that's crazy. 400% year to date. <laughs> and that was from the 20s, right? That's roughly where we were about a year ago. So Solana's been super impressive, super impressive year to date. More FTX Solana bankruptcy liquidations uh, or the auction pricing. It's interesting, actually. I thought this was an interesting post. It's really not that important, but last month, the auction price was $60, which was the 800 daily EMA. And this month's auction price is 110, which is the 200 day EMA. So it's kind of interesting. I wonder if they're just randomly picking EMAs. They're like, what price do we sell for now? Uh, this this EMA. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, I just thought that was kind of interesting, but not overly important. But uh, yeah, there's more Solana being sold. And this time the price is 110. And I'm pretty sure it'll be like last time where hopefully it'll be vested and locked. So whoever they sell it to, hopefully won't dump it on the market or won't be able to dump it on the market. So anyway, saw this post. Please use cash if you can. Last week, our card machine charges were equal to a day's wages for a member of our team. That's insane. So this is what banks are charging for, for fees. And I said Stripe and Solana USDC is the solution. So there you go. <laughs> of course, I think someone else in this, their reply was Bitcoin fixes this. But I mean, let's be honest, USDC on Solana, superior option. But anyway. <laughs> It's crazy what kind of fees the banks charge just to use their uh, their payment rails. 
So, okay, this is probably the most important part of this video. We've got Wonderland Live. So Sanctum, the liquid stake token minter or distributor or platform, whatever you want to call it, has launched Wonderland. So Wonderland, you can head over to Sanctum So on X, or you can use my ref link. Please use my ref link because I would greatly appreciate it. And if you use my ref link, which I'll leave in the description below, we both will benefit from that. So let's get into what it's all about. So for starters, the thing, the thing that I found most important about this was you can actually earn XP overall. So you get experience points for holding at least 0.1 sol worth of INF in your wallet or having at least 0.1 deposited in the protocols listed below. So at least one sol worth of INF and then other LSTs and stuff as well. So you earn 10 XP for every minute of one sol worth of INF that you hold and you earn 10 XP for every minute of sol worth of INF deposited in a Marta, in a vault providing liquidity or providing equity in Camino altcoin markets. Again, it's zero LTV, so you can't borrow against it, but it does earn you points in Camino. And I just tested that yesterday because I thought it didn't, but I put in 100 INF and I saw that the daily points went up. So it does actually give you points for Camino season two. There's also MarginFi isolated market INF deposits. Now, if you can get into MarginFi, you also get orbs for Switchboard as well by doing that. So that's something worth noting. So there's extra points there. You get MarginFi points, which we don't know anything about the MarginFi airdrop. MarginFi seems to be okay again. So, you know, you could probably put stuff in there if you want again, but uh, I'm sticking to Camino personally. You've got Meteora, INF, Sol, DLLM pool, which will give you Meteora points another airdrop and that one's pretty underfarmed so that's probably one I'd recommend and the soul and ISC permissionless pool doesn't earn you soul end season two points so I would go for some of the other ones personally so depositing your eye into any of the above gets you 10 xp per minute not 20 so it doesn't stack I think is what they're saying there so you can't just put 10 in and then you know, hold 10 in your wallet and then hold 10 in these protocols but anyway so here's the actual post for wonderland quickly go over it so it's a loyalty program you collect points you get pets so every lst that you have you get a pet that you level up it's pretty cool it's quite engaging actually they've like gamified the points process because you know usually just sort of farm points you know <laughs> and that's pretty much it you just watch the number go up but this one you get all these little uh these little pets but they're not nfts or anything like that maybe you can mint them in the future who knows right but uh for now essentially you collect these pets so you get a pet level i'll show you the platform in a sec and then look at all these little <laughs> All these little guys, <laughs> they're pretty cute actually. So there's 18 pets featured in season one and each one of these is for a different LST. So a different liquid staked token for Solana essentially. And to, to get it going, you just connect your preferred wallet. So in my case, it's Phantom and uh, put in the referral key or use my link and then that will automatically populate in there for you. So yeah, remember to put your referral code if you have one and then you're enrolled and that's pretty much it. Also you get cupcakes. So every unique referral code upon successfully enrolling in Wonderland, you get extra XP. So if someone has joined, you stand a chance to win bonus XP at the end of season one. But make sure that you put the referral key in at the start because you won't get another chance to do it later. So there'll be EXP multipliers. So the EXP multipliers is a temporary buff to the rate at which your pets earn EXP. So it's represented by a little chevron. Is that what this is? Little chevron, that's a chevron apparently. Icon, your multiplier, is not affected by a pet's level. So the multipliers aren't possible alone. Community needs to come together to complete community quests to unlock multipliers. There are quests and I'll show you those in a sec. Upon completion of a community quest, all wanderers will be rewarded with a multiplier. So which pet gets the multiplier depends on the quests and it changes with every quest. So these are the community quests, essentially. And this is all part of it as well. Again, as I said, it's gamified. It's quite engaging. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So the community quest tasks and puzzles that wanderers need to come together in exchange to unlock more of Wonderland for the entire community. New quests will be released periodically, watch out. They get harder and harder. And the only way to solve them is to work together as a community. This is really interesting. That's kind of cool. And I think the quests release every Monday, I think it is, or every week. So I believe that their TGE and airdrop will be in June. At the moment, there isn't any quests. So I went on there, I was like, where's the quests? But there isn't any quests available just yet. Most of my LSTs are very INF heavy, to be honest, but I do have a bit of dupe soul and helium soul, and I'll show you why. I've got H soul in a few minutes. So I think the max level is 999. <laughs> so that's quite, quite high. I thought it was 88 because there was some song 
video they posted on their page that said get them up to 88 but i think that's just like lucky numbers <laughs> lucky 88 there's evolutions and it shows you your pets level there at the top and yeah so the quests will be released weekly in batches of two or three quests and so the rewards for that will be issued on Fridays. So this one might get a little over farmed, but we'll see how it goes. So here's the dashboard. Here's what it looks like, essentially. Zoom out a little bit. There you go. So the points you can see accruing up the top there. We've got 3.58 million XP at the moment. My global rank doesn't come up. I'm probably pretty low in it. That's where your cupcakes will show for any referrals that you manage to snag. I've got three pets at the moment, so I'm not super diversified. Uh, that's your referral code there. So if you want to invite any of your friends or anything like that to, to join in, you can get your code just here. So there you go. And here are the pets. So I've got Infinity, Jupiter, <laughs> and Healy. My Infinity, I think will probably level up pretty fast because it says 68 here, but I've also got, I don't know, 200 or something INF in Camino. So, you know, it should probably level up pretty quick. But yeah, you've got all the other ones as well. There's the Drift. Staked soul one there, you got the bonk soul one there, juicy soul, so on and so forth. So yeah, that's all the different pets. I mean, you can diversify into different LSTs if you want. I'm pretty heavy into the infinity one and uh, I got a bit of dupe one as well. So anyway, this is the dashboard essentially. And this is where the quests are. You can see here, if you just scroll down this, you can see the community quests there. I mean, there's nothing available just yet. And if you click on this, you can see there'll be evolutions. So it's coming soon. And as it says here, this is not an NFT. <laughs> You'll not see a pet in your wallet. So anyway, that's pretty much what it looks like. So it's a gamified points program. It's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool anyway. Sort of gives a bit more engagement to the point system, right? If you want to know more information about it, you can just come in and check out their guide. They've got a full documentation here. So you can come through and, and check out all that stuff if you want. And just regarding the quests, we can see here in the documentation that a, the uncompleted quest will roll over and continue to be available for you and other wanderers to complete. Anyway, I think that's probably enough for now. Uh, I would appreciate if you use my referral code, just shameless plug on that. I'm just going to keep plugging it or, or not. I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that's going now. And if you have any Sanctum LSTs, then you may as well go over there and set it all up because you can start earning all the points and yeah i've already referred a couple of friends because <laughs> because why not but anyway i think it's pretty cool what they're what they're doing they won the lfg vote if you recall and anyone who voted for them will also get bonus airdrops as well so this is all part of the airdrop farm and essentially it's a linear airdrop farm so it won't be like judo unfortunately as in all you have to do is hold INF for an lst in order to get airdropped it is a points program so that's why if you want to get the airdrop or at least increase your airdrop if you voted for them in the lfg then essentially this is what you got to do i think this video is pretty cool i think it was made by ai using like miyazaki inspired animation it looks a bit totoro ish so let's move on so we've got unlocks for pith coming in may and uh, people are talking about it being a potential dump uh, for the pith token price but if you have a look into it you'll see that the unlock is for ecosystem growth so it's not a VC unlock or anything like that. So, but I'm, I'm guessing even for ecosystem growth, they'll probably need to sell some of the tokens. But uh, nevertheless, Pith pricing has been doing pretty well overall. Like it hasn't been too crazy, not super bearish or anything like that, considering Wormhole and what that did. It's another token where, you know, staking can earn you airdrops across various ecosystems. Because again, Pith is not just on Solana, it's on many chains, just like Wormhole, right? It's one of those things where staking that can earn you airdrops, I mean, I got an extra 2,000 wormhole for staking pits. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. But yeah, this is their vesting schedule, essentially. And you can see that this chart goes until, is that 2048? <laughs> what the hell? That's ages into the future. Wow, that's a very slow vesting schedule. So anyway, that's uh, that's what it is. You can see ecosystem growth is quite big, but this is the unlock. I don't think that this is, I think this is not 2048. I think it's the 48th unlock. So it's actually, this should be the date down the bottom, not the unlock. But anyway, whatever, <laughs> it is what it is. Maybe it's like an epoch or something. Anyway, this here is the slice of the pie that is being unlocked. So Jupiter has mentioned here through the Coinbase wallet, there's Solana trading and it's powered by Jupiter Exchange, which is really cool. So the Coinbase wallet team have collaborated with Jupiter in order to integrate token swaps routing through Jupiter. So that's really, really cool. So I guess we'll see more volume going through Jupiter to anyone who uses the Coinbase wallet. Also, JitoSol is now expanding to ERC20 on Arbitrum using Wormhole, native token transfers. So the NNTT takes JitoSol multi-chain supported by balancer liquidity pools and featuring real-time rate adjustments 
from Solana via wormhole queries. So that's pretty cool. So we've got Judo Soul now on Arbitrum, which is kind of cool. So if you're an ETH user and you don't really want to get into Solana, then, well, this is one way you can gain exposure to liquid staked Solana using Judo. But as, as you saw just before, I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't just bridge over to Solana. <laughs> so you can participate in all these rewards programs. But anyway, that's fine. You know, you do you, obviously. But yeah, it's also part of the bridge, right? So if you go to Wormhole Bridge, or Jito Bridge is this interface, but it uses Wormhole in the back end, you'll see that part of the process, you can you select the Arbitrum network. Cool, so while we're talking about referral codes, <laughs> uh, remember Clone Protocol is doing a points program for their airdrop, and if you wanna check it out, I'll shamelessly plug my ref link. So there you go. I'll leave a link to this one in the description as well, but they've just got a, a 2X referral points multiplier. It's gonna end in 48 hours, so it probably doesn't mean much for me overall, but Clone is another one, another airdrop, which I mentioned a couple of videos ago that I'm farming for airdrops. This one, I believe, is very underfarmed. I think this is actually underfarmed. This one here, so you can just go and provide liquidity and it's got leverage liquidity providing, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's not huge leverage, but you know, you can put down more liquidity than the money that you put into there for farming points. So it's pretty cool. Again, what Clone is, is it's wrapped assets on Solana like Arbitrum, for example. So you can buy Arbitrum on Solana. So if you come over here, it'll ask you for a code. Mine is 657 with three zeros in front. But anyway, that's my code, so I don't think it'll work. <laughs> but anyway, at the moment, we've got Clone BNB, Clone Doge, Clone Sui, Clone Optimism, and Clone Arbitrum. So that's what we've got at the moment. And this is not my primary wallet for Clone. So this is completely empty at the moment, but there you go. You can actually just refer yourself, <laughs> I guess. Probably do the same for... Uh, Sanctum, but I didn't say that. So anyway, let's move on. This is crazy. So Rollbit, I mentioned this at some point last year. Rollbit is migrating away from Sol at the bottom. So they're just like those NFT projects that, you know, migrated away from Solana. Terrible move, I think, overall. They missed out on all the meme coin mania on Solana. They're still migrating and it will literally burn your tokens if you don't migrate. So if you bought Rollbit on Solana, then you have to migrate it. Or you can do what I did and just sell it. <laughs> Because the whole reason why I bought Rollbit was, well, they've got impressive revenue, probably because of all the liquidations, but also I wanted to support the Solana ecosystem. So anyway, this is the process. You've got to migrate your RLB, RLB Sol tokens to Ethereum before May 1st to avoid losing your coins. So you really got to get onto this now, essentially. It says it's going to be burnt in six days. Do it now if you've got RLB or Rollbit coin on Solana. And yeah, Solana's up roughly 833% since this. So nice work team. <laughs> and here's how I migrated. So I just swapped my roll bit into Helium Sol. <laughs> and Mert said, this is arguably the most based move in the history of all moves, maybe ever. <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. But anyway, just make sure you get onto that now if you have RLB on Solana, because otherwise you will lose it forever, which is terrible that they're burning it. But what can you do, huh? Okay, so let's move on. Bonus rewards for uprock voters so if you voted for uprock which i did in my second vote on one of my wallets then you actually get bonus rewards for voting for them so that's pretty cool they didn't announce this before but they're announcing it now users will be able to claim three days after tge so you can see here they're, they're actually locking the tokens straight away to prevent you know massive dumps because we've seen that happen essentially three days later you'll be able to claim your tokens. So reward allocation for users who participated in the first round of voting exclusive to Uprock voters. So there's also bonus for if you voted in both. So the first one I voted for Zeus and the second one uh, for, on both of my wallets. <laughs> and then the second one I voted for Uprock and Sanctum, but Sanctum got my, you know, my big vote. <laughs> you know, with my 10K dupe. Also, there are additional rewards for D Pioneers NFT. So I don't even know what that is, but anyway. Just to remind you, Uprock is a data sharing platform similar to Grass, but you can only use it on Mac OS. It's on Android and the Apple App Store as well. Essentially, you're pre-mining UPT at this point. But anyway, that's pretty cool. And also, as I mentioned, Sanctum also gave you extra bonuses for voting for them as well. Okay, so the KMNO airdrop is coming or the token launch i should say is coming and so flexilin users will be able to claim im app tomorrow once claims are enabled by camino so if you're using flexiland then you come over here and you'll see the points that you can claim essentially or the kmno you can claim i should say and then just claim it within here and then also you'll have to claim separately i think for the live claim as well so you'll have to claim in both but yeah there's a lot of discussion going on around the uh the airdrops and and how different teams operate them but 
This is a post from FP Lee, the developer. And essentially this is what they're going for with regards to their airdrop. So discussion around airdrops inevitably circles around a single access, wealth. So poor F and then, you know, <laughs> you got money. But what we really should be thinking about is wealth and earnestness, right? In the top right, we have people who are rich and earnest. These are the people who are power users of many DeFi protocols, like me. <laughs> I'm not rich, but I'm earnest, that's for sure. They have a deep love for the product and the space, and therefore are often early. Bottom right, we have people who are rich and not earnest. These are the professional Sybil farms, yield farmers like Alameda influencers who shill the coin de jeu so they can dump on their followers. Look at this vampire that's a Sybil farmer, I guess. They're the mercenaries. And the top left, we have people who are poor but earnest. These are our most precious commodity, and we should shower them with love. They're simply young or new to crypto. So there you go. There's probably a good majority there. As an aside, the most beautiful thing about the industry is that if you're earnest, smart, and hungry enough, you can move to the top right quadrant very quickly, especially with some of the crazy airdrops that we've received recently anyway, right? And finally, the bottom left. We've seen many of these after the Camino airdrop. These are people who put $1 and spec to be made a millionaire. <laughs> you see these people a lot commenting on X, but anyway. They all wanna get rid of the mercenary value extractors and reward the earnest folks pushing our industry forward, rich or poor. So these, these are the guys they really care about and these guys, not so much. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But this is really difficult. Unlike capital X time, earnest is subjective and hard to measure. But what are we here for if not to solve hard problems? So yeah, I don't know how they're gonna measure earnest and poor, but uh, I guess we'll have to watch, wait and see, you know, what they do, rewarding community engagement, maybe for people who make content and stuff. So anyway, just a bit of an update from the developer, Soul Alchemist of Camino. And there will be Camino staking immediately available so after claiming users will be able to state their KMNO and get bonus points up to a maximum of 300% so that's pretty crazy so that's basically coming straight away live at launch which will be tomorrow essentially April 30th 12 p.m UTC okay so let's get on with it we've got wormhole possibly forming a base here so these are my buys on wormhole which I mentioned those buying at these levels I still think that there's some value in wormhole and I think these prices are quite low and you know just look at the structure here it just looks like it's primed and it really wants to start moving right starting to break structure here i mean have a look but i think we did get a bit of a pullback though because btc did this weird choppy stuff this sell the news event if you will on uh on the hong kong etf so we're still you know where i said we're gonna it looks like we're primed and ready to go we we came down a little bit drew down a bit and then we're still trying to break out of this range here right so this is just forming a range overall but we'll have to see how it goes i still have confidence that we'll get some cool stuff for wormhole potential monad airdrop remember wormhole is multi-chain so it, there's a chance that once they bring the staking out and this is probably what they're working on at the moment to work out what it is that people will get for staking their token but once the staking comes out then who knows what different chains and protocols will include wormhole stakers into their eligibility we don't know yet right it's all speculation at this point but still going to accumulate wormhole i still i've got quite a bit to be honest it's actually one of my biggest holdings now <laughs> but uh but yeah I, my, I do plan on taking some profit once we start to get back to the the levels we're at at launch but i'm definitely going to keep a bunch of it for staking for potential rewards in the future because pith has been really good so there's a good chance that wormhole will be too so with regards to drift they've got a 75 percent fee reduction at the moment for sol bitcoin and eth trading which is pretty cool so that will be essentially goes from 0.1 percent which is quite a high fee for takers but anyway to 0.025 which is pretty good that's about what you get you know if you refer on a centralized exchange for example also if you stake 10k of usdc in the insurance fund your fees drop to 0.01 percent which is pretty good also cindy from drift said should we list eigen pre-market perps so i mean that would be interesting that's something that you'll see doing the rounds at the moment as in the eigen layer airdrop some people got a pretty good airdrop and other people not so much but I'm already seeing a bit of drama about the, uh, the, the the airdrop at the moment on X. So anyway, but with regards to any airdrop, I, I really do hope that they do post this because I think anything pre-market, my plan is to uh, take short down on it. But anyway, past performance doesn't really indicate future performance, I guess. But if past performance is anything to go by, then all these tokens bleed out hard when they drop. So that's kind of what I why I would do that. But nevertheless, I think Eigen probably has a lot of potential in the long run 
at least with, over the course of this bull market. So eventually, if they do list the pre-market, then it will be available post-launch as well. Also, with regards to the liquidations that happen on MarginFi, you can go and claim over here, claims.marginfi.com, if you were part of that LST DPEG for MarginFi. But um, I'm pretty sure if this happened to you, you probably already know about this by now because you would have been following it a lot, I assume. And you can see someone here got a refund there for $485. So that's pretty good. So let's get on to some meme coin stuff. So Mineki, which I've covered in a couple of videos now, it's got a, a billboard over here on uh, in Hong Kong, and this is in Mong Kok, so up the top of Hong Kong, essentially just above the main island. So there you go. Cat just arrived in Hong Kong to celebrate the ETF launch. That's pretty cool. I wonder how many people know what this even is, actually, because Solana is huge back in 21. It's in 2021, the last bull market. The NFTs were all the talk in Hong Kong, so definitely a fair few people in Hong Kong that know about Solana. Bit of exposure there in Hong Kong and also in New York City where this truck driving around that had the Miniki ad on the side as well. So there you go. <laughs> They're doing a bit of a push at the moment, getting themselves out there. Overall though, Miniki is doing a pro it's, uh, its classic drawdown. So it's uh, basically stuck in a downwards channel. Hasn't broken anything yet. It did kind of look like maybe it was going to start recovering here, but uh, yep, it's just bleeding down, unfortunately. If you're bullish on this, then you could probably you know start to look for a base to farm we're not seeing any base yet this is still a falling knife so i wouldn't probably buy this until we clear this level here so right here at around 1.4 cents i would say if we start to reclaim this level and hold above it i would say then we've finally found a base and things will probably start to go up from there i would say this is people selling their airdrop because once price starts to go down and form lower highs and lower lows i guess it makes sense there's a bit of a complacency bounce there. Probably people cheating their airdrop here. So that's the uh, the slow grind down. But with regards to airdrops, there was this woof token, right? This woofy token. Look at this. So this was another airdrop for Solana Saga holders. It went up 360% in one single day candle. That's crazy. So that actually might be worth something now on the Saga. Yep. Okay. So the airdrop now for Saga holders is worth $50. That's pretty cool. <laughs> And yesterday, if you sold at the very top, it would have been worth $100. So that's pretty crazy. Anyway, so that's something that happened. <laughs> now, this is kind of still meme coin related. So when now has released dot when domain names. If you want to go claim yours, you can go to their Twitter profile and you can just find it in there. There's a post and it's all domains.id forward slash domains forward slash when. So anyway, if you want to claim your own when domain, it's about 0.15 sol for a year, I think. And you can send sol, NFTs, etc., to any when address. So you can type in the address when you're sending anything from your phantom wallet. And I did mine. <laughs> of course I did. So I had to do it. So you can claim yours here at this uh, link that I just mentioned. But there you go. I've got my own one right there. And what it does actually converts to when before buying the domain. So that's kind of like a when burn, I guess, maybe. <laughs> Or it probably pays for the actual hosting, but anyway. So that was kind of cool. Something worth mentioning. Now, Bonk. Well, let's have a quick look at Bonk. So the Bonk price is actually looks primed for a decent move to the upside. So we've got bullish TK cross trend meter down the bottom. We've got a breakout of the PSAR, which I think I covered this in the last video. But again, we did this last time as well, right? So we've got this level here. Essentially, we, we created a base at. So we've got a breakout, a break of structure like we did over here. So we've broken the structure here bullish and then we formed a base at the line dipped down a little bit below it but reclaimed it and then we went up so this to me looks primed like it really wants to start pushing up but it does depend on the rest of the market doing well in order for bonk to go because it's got a, it still has a correlation to bitcoin right this doesn't do its own thing we can see it's still going sideways <laughs> if we have a look at the live chart nevertheless i've got my long trade in here or just waiting to see if it pans out now there's this crazy token that launched right it's so it's called bonk killer now, Bonk Killer is a honeypot, so do not buy it. I think and I hope that anyone that's buying at this stage is just bots. Essentially, it's just draining the liquidity from bots because this thing has gone absolutely ballistic. So $105 trillion. So this is a world economy. Let's look at this. USA's worth is $26.9 trillion. That's their economy. 19.4 in China. Look at all this. It's $105 trillion world economy. The dev froze the accounts of token holders to prevent them from selling their tokens. So it's higher than 2023 world GDP. Oh, it's the GDP, sorry. And that's what this is. That's just insane. But yeah, steer clear of this thing, right? <laughs> so I, this is my post. It, it was 33 trillion, but now it's gone up to even more. But yeah, the initial supply was one sole, so $140. The developer who created 
the scam coin bonk killer has now started pulling out some of the funds so pulled out nearly half a million so far and retails just keeps buying this i don't know i'm pretty sure i'm hoping it's not retail i think it's just bots at this point but also maybe not but look at this this is the this was the liquidity pulled out and it still keeps going up it's at 328 trillion dollars market cap that makes no sense at all and like literally why is anyone buying this look at this f bonk f every meme coin meme coins Hun uh, there's only 1140 holders though so got no idea who's buying this thing but the price just keeps going up it's just insane in the last week it's gone up it says 1758 percent up the top there but it must be more than that but anyway this thing's insane stay away from it do not buy this coin so let's check out Michi. So Michi's doing pretty well. I don't know when the ride will be over, but at least time of recording this, it was up about 156 from when I mentioned it, but it's reaching for that $100 million market cap level. That's the milestone it's going for. And that would be up 344% from when I covered it in that in that video where I first talked about it. So that was the entry. That was the uh, the entry price when I released that video. So, I mean, it's on, it's on its path. It's on its way, hopefully. But I mean, like, any meme coin, obviously, it can go up a lot and then come down a lot. But it, yeah, it went to 17 cents. It's not too bad. People are definitely taking profit on it now. 70% from the highs. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I still have faith in this thing reaching that $100 million mi milestone. Or maybe even beyond. Maybe it goes to 500. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. Favorable market conditions would help for sure. But we'll see if this uh, if this can even make it to the $100 million market cap level. <laughs> That's the first step, right? Now, there is something called Nutflex, which is like Netflix, I guess. So it's like these weird videos and it will be hosted on Soul Media, which I covered in my last video, I believe. I guess it's a bit like Tuka and all these other ones where they're starting to make content for meme coins. That was the, uh, <laughs> the Netflix logo thing. I actually haven't even checked the media token. So it looks like it's kind of forming a base here at the moment, but uh, anyway. I actually don't own any of this, but I did use that platform and it was pretty good. So I don't know, up to you <laughs> if you want to invest in this thing. But uh, regardless, that's that's the host of Nutflex. And then we've got actual Nutflex probably has its own token as well. But anyway, I'll let you look into that if that interests you. But that's another thing like similar, I guess, to Tuka, I suppose, where they've got these weird videos and they'll be uploading a video every week to their platform. So anyway, some more meme coin developments, I guess. Okay, so let's have a look at some other things. I've only got a couple more things to cover. So we've got Hop Aggregator, which is like the Jupiter for Sui. So I've been seeing a lot more Sui developments recently. And uh, and yeah, so Hop now, they've got their own DEX aggregator. So if you're trading tokens on the Sui network, then this is probably where you wanna go to swap them because you'll get the best prices akin to Jupiter. It's exactly the same operation. Also on Injective, we have the ARB bots now live for Black Panther. So I think I mentioned in the last video that I wasn't sure about the ARB bots, but they, they are now live. So they're sniping pairs like INJ USDT on Helix and Dojo Swap. So there you go. Something new to add to the list of features or pulls on Black Panther. And lastly, I mentioned the BitStore virtual cards in one of my videos recently, which is where you can go and top up Sol USDT, for example, or, you know, BNB USDT, a bunch of other chains as well are supported. And it is a non-KYC card that you can use online. At some places, you can't add it to, you know, Google Pay or Samsung Pay or anything like that, or Apple Pay. You can only use it for purchasing stuff online at various kind of random retailers, none of the sort of the big fish. But uh, yeah, that was stopped. And uh, probably maybe because of the regulatory issues, I guess, in the US. They did have a Hong Kong one, which maybe that's what they'll bring back. But um, yeah, so essentially what you do if you did that is you just go over, open your card, and then you withdraw the funds. You just give it a wallet address. You can't withdraw to Solana. You can only withdraw to like BNB chain and a bunch of others like that. So that's what you do. Like you'd open up the account. You would see that the card was canceled and then you can just withdraw the funds. So the funds are safe, but it's recommended that you withdraw your balance. And apparently they will be listing new ones in May according to the Telegram chat. So anyway, that's just something that I thought I'd cover since I did mention this in a previous video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, then please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel if you want more content like this. Hit that bell notification if you want to be alerted when more videos come out from me. And go check me out on X or Twitter and give me a follow there if you want all of this alpha in real time before I do a long form video on it. And go check out Sanctum <laughs> if that's something that interests you. And you can check all the links that I mentioned in this video in the description below. So anyway, keep safe out there. This is Cryptolytics signing out. Have a good one.